They come from all over. They mark this day each year. They clear out their garage and open up their sheds and call upon their old boats once more. Fathers and daughters, mothers and sons, people of all ages and colors are all welcome on this day. And on this day, on this tiny little boat, you might just be an Olympian or an America's Cup winner. On this day, you might become a world champion. The duck boat worlds were always a highlight of the summer. As a kid, you know, you, you sail in point races, you sail every week, and then all of a sudden you get to sail in a world championship. You get to sail against grown-ups, you get to sail against your sailing instructors. You might not beat them overall, but you get to beat them in races. So I sailed in the first duck boat worlds, and it was a lot of fun because I had been teaching sailing and duck boats all summer. I'd been sailing duck boats all summer, so I was really feeling good in duck boats, and I, I, I managed to win one of the races and beat, if you can imagine, beating Peter Chance racing. It's like the highlight of my life. Um, not really, but. There were tr people who showed up every year. I remember um, Harriet Barton O'Brien being a regular participant, Peter Chance, Peter Kellogg, Ed, Ed King, Connie Pilling. I've probably raced 40 times. I probably have sailed in 10. We've been probably sailing this boat for at least 15, 20, no, I actually would say probably more like 10 years. I think I probably sailed in it most years. I can't claim to have done every world ducks, but I've done mostly all of them. Did you sail in the duck boat worlds? Yes. What years? I think Connie Pilling probably has a record for having raced the most world duck boat races. And she's probably close to 50. The World Duck Boat Regatta brings in sailors from all over the country. There is no weight class or age limit, but there are some tricks to sailing this old wooden boat. So what's the secret to sailing a duck boat? I can't tell you. Oh my goodness. Um, Secrets to sailing a duck boat? I can tell you as long, am I being filmed right now? Well, the key to sailing a duck boat well, don't over trim going upwind. You have to sail this boat at like a lower angle, like you can't pinch at all. Like, I personally think you need to drive the boat, you don't pinch. You don't pinch, keep it moving. I don't want to give away all my secrets, but you do need to set up two pumps for either side and have them that you can do them one-handed. To win the World Ducks, you have to get a good start. One of the main strategies getting on the starting line with 80 boats is you got to avoid the kids. Because if you get entangled with one of the kids, one, you can lose your sportsmanship opportunities, um, and two, there are no drop races. With a 65-boat fleet, it's really hard to start on that line because you don't know the good kids from the bad kids, so you have to be in this mode of everybody's going to be dangerous, you know, so, and the, half of them might not know the rules, so you just have to be very conservative to start. I got back in the duck boat and I'm too heavy. I'm so big, it's hard to, hard to race, even though if you have a fast boat. It's hard to make a duck boat go if you're 200 pounds. Also, just playing the main. You know, um, the best way to do it is not having a harken block. It's, it's trimming under the cleat that's on the centerboard well. 
And then uh, I guess the last thing I'll say is your board is pretty critical and there's a, a perfect place to keep it, but I'm not gonna tell you quite that. And actually the heel is super important too. You wanna be healed pretty much at all times and heal to weather going downwind, big time. My advice for people sailing the duck boat worlds, take Advil before you sail. It's not a comfortable boat, those side, uh, especially the, the combing on the sides. They, uh, they really cut into you. And of course, the, you know, the heavier you are, the, the harder you sink on it. <laughs> I hurt for like five days after that. <laughs> My thighs, oh, were killing me. It's like I couldn't even. He got I, a, actually rolled into the support boat. Roll, <laughs> rolled off the, off the, it rolled in. He said, don't touch me. <laughs> just let me sit here for five, so, I'm five fine. minutes. <laughs> I'm fine, just let me lie here. At the end of the day, your shins are all bloody. You gotta pump the thing out. You gotta pump the thing out all the way around the course. You take stock of all the bruises. I had huge bruises here and here from last year and on my shins too, or on my calves, I should say. Um, so it was just, it was carnage on my body. You have to erase the pain, even though it's uncomfortable and you're all squashed in and hard moving around, you gotta put that out of your mind. The key to getting a duck boat to move is sitting forward. So you need to get as far forward as you can next to the centerboard well. I normally would reveal too much, but I didn't on purpose. It's, you know the board, where the board's supposed to be, right? As we all know, racing a duck boat is half the battle. The real work starts months before the boat is put in the water. I remember when I was little, um, every winter we spent a ton of time uh, working on the duck boats. At one point we had two, uh, one that my sister was using and one that we were fixing up for me. We took both of them down to wood, completely recalked them, repainted them. My father bent a uh, old rasp or file, bent the tip on it uh, to make a hook for ripping out the old caulking from the seams. And I remember putting the new caulking cotton in the seams, rolling it in with a little hand roller, uh, and then actually caulking the seams of modern, modern caulk. When I was growing up, one of the coolest things that we were about the duck boats was the fact that it was a bonding experience for my father and I. My father and I would actually come down to the shore in May and in late April, and we'd go into the garage and we'd get sandpaper and we'd sand the boat and turn it over and paint the bottoms and paint the deck and paint the inside. And he and I would spend the weekends together. It was the one time that it was just him and me doing these kind of activities, and it was really fun and really important. It's really pride of ownership, I think, that um, might be a little lacking these days. And I don't even remember my parents helping us at all. I mean, I just knew that, like, every Wednesday, I think, because we didn't sail on Wednesdays in Metaloking, we would scrub the bottoms of our boats. And to this day, when I open a Comet container and smell that smell, it, 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 I've, it's like I have my scrub brush. And there were barnacles, I mean, it was nasty. I worked on the duck boat with both my mom and dad. They did most of the work. So they tried to get me involved and I, and I helped. But my mom was the painter. She was the one that, you know, really had the skill. The cleaning the bottom, I think, I don't know, probably should have been done every week. I don't suspect I did that. Um, I, every summer, duck boat needed to be worked on. I have a very interesting relationship with an electric sander. 
Like I'm visual, I know the sander, I know the smell, like I've got, it's ingrained in my brain. My dad was like, do not leave until this is perfect. You know, and that sander and I were very close. The spars, the mast and the boom, would get water stained, generally where, wherever fastens, fastenings went in, they'd get black. And we would take the hardware off and uh, sand the varnish down and actually bleach those areas of the spars to get them clean again. You had to sand it down and it needed this wet sand 600, but maybe you had to take the 400 first, then you had to go into the 600 and it had to be wet and you used the, the, the power when it wasn't wet and then you had to do it by hand. On the block, I had the wet sandpaper on the block and I got in there, you know? So we've done three boats now. Um, the first one has been done three times. The second boat, the girls really got involved. Um, it was a sandy boat, missing a rudder, really bad shape, and they helped strip the paint off, helped me make the rudders. Uh, we power planed and, and belt sanded and shaped. And It's fun working with my dad because he knows like a ton about uh, building boats and... Yeah, it was cool working with him and like after building, I think we like restored three duck boats together, mostly him, but like we helped a little. Um, it was fun to see like each year how we could perfect it and like make it better each time. None of us have really worked on a boat before, you know, and uh, so this is all kind of new to us. We got advice on a lot of different from a lot of different people saying you need to do this, this, or this, and they were all different. And then we went to Tom Beaton. Nice. Asked him his opinion, what we should do. You know, every day was kind of a new adventure on trying to figure out what needs to be done. So Connie and I flew up to uh, Philadelphia, uh, middle of February, rented a car, rented a truck, drove over to uh, New Jersey, picked up a duck boat from Mike O'Brien. We came all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to New Jersey, pick up a duck boat, drive it back to Florida, just so Peter could fix it up and go beat those O'Brien girls in the duck boat world. <laughs> right. And here it is. I removed the entire deck. The mast step had fallen apart. The bow of the boat was opened up like an alligator's mouth. They just took this thing apart. They took the centerboard out. They took all the hardware off the boat. Each year, the junior sailors who were going to sail the duck boat in the world uh, helps work on it. We, uh, we sand it down a little bit, take the rough patches off, uh, fill the gaps, put a new coat of poly on it, and they, they do varnish, they do sanding. Each year as we're getting ready to have the kids compete in the World Ducks, we're able to have conversations with them and teach them about uh, the history of the duck boat and the history of uh, wooden boat racing on Barnegat Bay. Sailing a duck boat definitely teaches you what your like parents sailed back then. Like Now we have all these new boats, but they were sailing these like wooden boats that you have to make sure that you maintain like precisely or else you won't go as fast, like that's just the bottom line. <laughs> the World Duck Boats kind of brought out the importance of maintaining a wooden boat and keeping it light and fast and stiff. It's just a, a great way to learn how to sail, but more about learning, more than that, it was about how to learn boats, yeah. keeping them up, maintaining them, wooden boats. Getting together with the friends, it's wonderful. We, we had just a great time, especially under the conditions of the COVID and all that nonsense. The worst part of, about the whole experience was finishing the duck boat. When I was waiting to start the first race, um, one of the boats came up to me and said, what's more fun, working on the boat or sailing it? And without a doubt, working on the boat was a lot more fun. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. When the, when the boat was done, it, it was like a kind of like a a real letdown. <laughs> it's actually kind of like a bummer because now it's like, uh, you know, there's the boat back in the garage and, you know, these guys are going off to work. I'm coming home from work and, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's just, you know, kind of missed them a lot. To, really, to be honest with you, that, that's the God's honest truth. You know, it's uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun and I'll tell you something, you know, with everything that went on last year, to, to have these two fellas to come over to my house and just to, you know, take your mind off of things, everything else that was just going on, it was, it was a godsend. I think it's really important that kids learn how to take care of a wooden boat and learn the mechanics of, and the nuts and bolts of a wooden boat and how to take care of it. The sanding, the painting, the varnishing, the caulking. So much of 
What I think about in sailing is boat maintenance, um, loving a boat, uh, giving it a new coat of paint every year. Part of my enjoyment as a kid sailing and growing up and having my own boat was working on the boat myself. And we've lost that with fiberglass and the fact that these hovering parents, you know, do everything for the kids. We see that in college sailing now. A lot of these kids, they've got the hover parents in the junior program, they got the full-time coach, then they go off to college and they have a full-time coach. And everything's done for them, the boat's almost rigged for them. So then they get out of college and they don't know how to put a program together. They don't know how to handle their own boat, so they kind of drift away from it. I always go back to that, my first 12-year-old experience at Beaton's Boatyard, getting into a boat and getting involved and working on it, right? That was a transformative experience for me. And that's an experience that I would like to share with kids wherever I can. One thing I think that's lost in our sport today is that daddy buys an opti, gives it to the kid, daddy does all the work on the boat. You know, when I was a kid in my moth boat, my father bought me the moth boat but I was, you know, I'd take care of the thing. And sure, he'd show up every Friday and do his white glove inspection on the boat, but I did all the maintenance, and, I, and if I drilled a hole in the wrong place, it wasn't a big deal. I learned to handle tools. I now sail with kids at the Naval Academy. All these kids are so techno smart, but you ask them to go get a screwdriver out of the toolbox, and they come up with a hammer. You know, it's just amazing that we've lost that skill. The night before the World Duck Boat Championship is Judgment Night. Duck boats are trailered in, rigged, and lined up for the next day's races. But before the boats hit the water, they will be judged to see who will win Queen of the Show. All boats must be in seamanlike, Bristol fashion if there's any chance of possessing the top prize. So the night before World Ducks is setup night, and that's when all the boats come and they get themselves rigged. And so we do the judging as everybody's setting up uh, the boats on Thursday night. So you watch all these people rigging their boats, coiling their lines and getting everything all neat as they then wave to flag down one of the judges to come over and check out how their boat looks. Seeing all the duck boats lined up in Bristol condition uh, is, is, really, is really a cool thing. Everyone did a great job putting their boats back together. And they, they, all these boats were just pristine. They were Bristol. The criteria for the judging is that all your paint is non-peeling, that your varnish not cracked, that it's fresh, that your lines are coiled, and that you have all of the pieces. I mean, the boat is clean and doesn't have any dirt um, in it. Um, I mean, so it's, it's Bristol fashion. When we unveiled the boat for the first time up there, it was like I was a, a proud father uh, because of all the hard work that we did to, to get the boat to the condition that it was in. Shore Acres has five other boats? Five. Five, five, club, five. five club duck boats. And we know ours is the best. <laughs> Bottom line. Is that the Our boat won the top award for Bristol condition. The first year we had it up there, we won Queen of the Show, which is the award they give to the best looking boat in the, in the regatta. We really wanted to get first place. We were looking uh, for the judging, you know, to, to have the judging at, at uh, the Yacht Club, and it didn't happen. So we were kind of saddened by that, but we were looking, we were looking for first place to get that $5,000 for the club. Although the racing and judging seem to take center stage, the core of the event is about giving. For Peter, it was never so much about the money as it was the number of charities. And he enjoyed each year the list of charities that it was going to. 
and that there would be 30 or 40 different charities and organizations that were getting the funds. The World Duck Boat Championship is over 50 years old, and this is how it was created. Duck boats were the training boat in three yacht clubs, Mandaloking, Bayhead, and Manasquan. There were about 35 boats at Mandaloking. There was over 50 boats at Bayhead, and there were 30-something boats at Manasquan, the only three clubs that, that had the duck boats. And so somebody came up with the great idea, let's have, have the duck boat world. I remember very well the evening that we thought it up, and it was Muzzy, Willie, and myself. In 1969, Willie, myself, and Press came up with the concept. As the kind of thing Muzzy Barton would say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I want to think he, he thought of it. Hey, we should have a world championship. We were talking about the Bullseye Nationals, and I don't know if anybody knows what a bullseye is, but it's this short, squat, tubby boat that doesn't go very fast, it's got a keel, and the, the idea of, a, of the bullseye nationals just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But I, I think it was me, I thought, well how about, if you can have the bullseye nationals, why can't we have the duck boat worlds? You know, initially it started out as a Barnegat Bay Duck Boat Championship. And so we're not gonna call it the Barnegat Bay Duck Boat Championship, it's the World Ducks. There were maybe 20 boats or something, and I forget who the race committee was, but maybe Mr. DeCamp, he probably was the race committee, Willie's father. And somehow or other, I was the winner of the first World Duck Boats. The duck boat fleet had diminished uh, because no one was sailing in them anymore, but there were still a few around. And The Optimus Pram was taking over junior sailing and the duck boats were tucked away all over the place in boat yards and under porches and so on and, and, and starting to rot away. You could see the pattern, which is duck boats are dying out. It got harder to do every year. Finally, we got down to around 14 or 15, and it was sort of a melancholy feeling, although we were all having fun. It was, the, how, how long is this gonna last? Could something be done? That is when Peter Kellogg, uh, uh, single-handedly and single-mindedly, came up with his it, truly ingenious idea for the current format of the regatta. I remember the day we were towing back to Bayhead with uh, Peter Kellogg, Dan Harding, Ed King, we were the regulars. And as, as Peter Kellogg would do, he had out of nowhere, a yellow legal pad showed up. And he goes, all right, let's, let's figure out how to change this, how to make this sustainable. Ding, ding, ding. So we were just throwing out ideas. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, he just had the idea. Go get these boats. Go find every duck boat available. Start to give them out to the yacht clubs. Let's bring back the vision of having a Bristol condition, taking care of a boat matter. Let's get the mentorship of older members, taking, working with younger members how to take care of a wooden boat. I was actually tasked at that time to go around and find 13 duck boats that I could give to the 13 yacht clubs because Peter felt it was very important that each yacht club have a duck boat that they can rehab and restore and get the money that they were planning on setting up as a participation fee. The 13 boats Peter Kellogg donated to the clubs were kept at Beaton's. And we were fortunate enough to be one of the first clubs to get up there and pick, up, pick out a boat. So we think we got the best one. In Pine Beach, our junior sailing program didn't really know anything about wooden boat sailing until Peter Kellogg donated our first duck boat. 
Each year, I have the kids go over and personally thank Peter for allowing them to be part of this really special regatta. He sets a, a, an incredible example through his philanthropy. He doesn't have to do it. He does it because he loves it, and he wants to be around other people who share that passion. the history, I mean, these are old boats, you know, 40s, 50s, I don't know how far they go back, but they're, a lot of these are pristine pieces of furniture, you know, they really are, I mean, they're, they're, a, they're beautiful, they're well kept, and a lot of time, money, and effort go into keeping them that way, you know, so uh, this whole program that they have with the Duck Worlds and things like that is a wonderful thing for the Bay to, to keep the history alive. A lot of boats got rebuilt at Philadelphia Maritime, and, you know, and a lot of places that did wood, woodworking, so it supported, you know, the woodworking industry. So, so this has been a great long-term way to support an education program centered on boat building. When we actually started that whole program the first year, we probably had 25 boats there. We're now up to almost 100 boats, and that's with boats being built by places you've never even heard of. The Hill School, which started programs in order to create duck boats they could bring to this event. So it's been really exciting to see this class of boats not be lost to time. World Ducks brings in some of the best competition the Barnegat Bay has ever produced. Olympic sailors, America's Cup champions, hometown heroes who come back to where it all began. The people to look out for in the World Ducks. People to beat. The people to beat. Every year are Russell Lucas, my sister Jan O'Malley, Peter Hurley, Peter Komet, uh, Willie DeCamp when he races. Peter Chance, Peter Wright, Russell Lucas, Peter Komet. Muzzy Barton if he got in, Harriet Barton. Uh, these are the ones I remember most. And then there's a whole new crop of young people that are very good. I think sailing in the America's Cup prepared me for sailing in the, in the duckboat worlds. World Ducks is a place where guys come home, no matter where you sailed, whether you went to Olympics or America's Cup, you always come home for World Ducks. I'm out there sailing this race, doing okay, upwind when the breeze is up, but going downwind, it was bad. These young people passing me, you know, I'm thinking, hey kid, don't you know who I am? I raced in the America's Cup. You asked me a question, why are the duck boat world so important? That's, you really need some qualification, you know, to whom? Who are they important to? The world ducks has always just been this common, important denominator for Peter Komet. He would always write me a note or give me a call. How'd you do? He was, he was always keeping score. Are you afraid of Russ Lucas? Yes. He is the best ever to have sailed duck boats. Uh, he's won the duck boat worlds, I don't know, 10 times. Even though Peter hasn't raced as often as I have, uh, he's that consummate, um, you know, it's that consummate stalking horse. And it, that comes from his passion, not the number of times he wins. Peter Komet probably knows more than I do about why a duck boat might be fast or slow. I, I mean, he, he's <laughs> highly competitive. <laughs> Some people, the world duck boats are so important that they make special efforts to make the best boat, get the best sail, have the best pump system, have the best hiking straps. 
certainly Peter Komet is in that category. There are many others, but he is the ultimate. You guys are pretty competitive? Yeah. Um, probably me. No, I'd say I, I consistently say no. was I, better, so no. maybe we're pretty even, but uh, I'd say, like, if you look back at the results, it was usually <laughs> always me. Oh, my last, my last regatta was the fourth one I did, and I had these the two O'Brien twins. They were phenomenal. I forget the name of the gal that won that year. I think I was fourth, but I could get to the weather mark after having a great start and have her buried like seven boats behind me <laughs> by the lured mark. She was ahead of me. It's definitely key just to be in that top pack at the windward mark and then you can just pass them. Like with my boat speed in like these duck boats, I can just make up the distance by just being patient and is key and sailing fast. You know, I think the coolest part of it is with all my sailing experience, to see a 13 year old junior sailor be that competitive, to me, is really impressive. So this big puff comes in, and it's a starboard lift, and I'm on starboard tack, and I'm now lifting and rolling off one of the O'Brien twins. You know, and, and she's going fast, and she comes to win all the time, and I'm passing her. Then I sailed into a header, and I tack over, and I, I put her behind me, and I'm going along. And then this boat comes across, crossing me on starboard, and tax right on my win. It's one of the O'Brien girls. Oh, there's two of them. I didn't know at that point. I thought, where did she come from? I just passed her on a big lift, sailed and I had her. I'm on a lift and I'm getting crossed. It was confusing. I mean, it's a great event. It brings these uh, older boats together. People put a lot of pride into them. They fix them up, all different colors and schemes. And it's my favorite boat. Like, I just wouldn't miss it. I and mean, I can't, I still can't believe that the juniors don't sail duck boats anymore. I'm so thankful that we have the World Ducks. And I still remember the names of the boats we raced as kids. The numbers, who owned it before. You have that whole legacy of where'd that boat come from. One race, one race, I finished third. I mean, it's a great achievement to look back and see all those boats and only two boats ahead of me. It was one of the great races of my life. To me, that little duck up on my shelf is one of my prized possessions because when you look at who's won the duck boat worlds, Peter Komet, Russ Lucas, Willie DeCamp, a lot of guys I sail went as a, you know, on scows, really good sailors. And somehow I got my name on that trophy. So it's one of my prized possessions.